Hey guys, good morning. Um, so we're gonna do, we're, we got some stuff in the mail um, for Annie and also for Richie. We got some letters that we want to read and we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. You don't know how much we feel blessed right now, guys. So we're gonna show you, somebody really loves Annie, okay? This is for Max, and Annie really appreciates it. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see, does Annie? There go Annie. Want a milk bone? Does her want that? Uh -huh. <laughs> she said breakfast, so she might not. You never know. She's kind of finicky. Come on. She might eat it later. <laughs> she just had breakfast. Okay, <laughs> oh, there she goes. Look. There she oh, goes. she, she goes. drops she it. <laughs> That's funny. She just drops it, put it in her mouth, and dropped it. That's hilarious. Hey, but we want to thank you, Max. We appreciate it very much. Okay. I'm going to set this over here. Okay, so our next one that we got here is, and and you probably saw our video where Richie is talking about all of those Scotch Brot pads where you can't find them anymore, which is crazy. But this one is from John Caldwell in South Jordan, Utah. We thank you, thank you, thank you because they are really hard to find and it's kind of crazy. So very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Definitely. Okay, so we're going to read a couple of letters. And this one is from Birmingham, Alabama. I know you will. You eat everything <laughs> when you get home. <laughs> That's funny. So this one says, it says, Hello, Trent. I am a YouTube follower and enjoy your videos. I have some ideas of a video and hope you will consider the following. We do appreciate everyone sending in um, their recommendations. It's hard to do everything that people want to do. Number one, what is the difference between a transaxle and transmission? I noticed you don't have any videos on them. Do they work the same? Richie? Uh, basically work the same though. Uh, a transaxle is a front wheel drive transmission and a, tra a rear wheel drive is just a transmission. Uh, uh, basically, just a difference. They make an all wheel drive, which is a front wheel drive, and then you push uh, possibly a button. If it's an auto four wheel drive, it'll kick in the back tires, uh, or uh, you got a four wheel drive that kicks in the front tires. So, I mean, you got a little bit of variation of everything. So, but a transaxle is a front wheel drive, and then you have a rear wheel drive. Okay, number two, is it safe to replace the trans fluid with synthetic equivalent? Probably if it doesn't accept, if I'm guessing. If it doesn't accept it, no, I would, I would always go back with the original fluid that is called for from Ford, GM, Chrysler, Honda, Toyota, whatever. I would always just go back with the original. I would never try to change it uh, halfway through its life or something like that. Okay, number three. Does a fluid change of what is drainable several times helpful? If you have a like a drain and fill training, is that what you're asking? Uh, if it's dirty or something like that, I would drain it, run it for 200 miles, drain it again. Let's get this fluid clean because these new trainees nowadays have to have clean fluid uh, to work properly. I mean, that's why they're designed. If you put the wrong fluid in them, they'll go down. But they go down today, tomorrow, but the next day they could, so you want to always put the right fluid in them, so. Okay, number four. I've heard to not flush the trans fluid because then new fluid detergents can loosen junk and clog the solenoids. Is there any truth to that? Uh, probably so, I would say so. Uh, we don't like flushing uh, transmissions at all. We do a physical drop the pan, change the filter, let them drain as long as they can for 30 to 40 minutes, something like that, and then fill them back up. We just don't really recommend a flush because you are risking all kinds of uh, things to have problems. So. And you have to remember, most of the time when people decide to service their transmission or flush, it's too late anyway. Their fluid is already 
broke down, the viscosity is gone, so most of the time it's not a good idea anyway. They're usually having issues or something like that to start with, and that's what's uh, wanting them to change the fluid. So always service your trannies because nowadays these new transmissions are very expensive. They're all computer controlled. They have to have fresh fluid to work. So. Okay, number five. What causes the most stress on a transmission? Temp, load, keeping trans in B while idling for long periods, etc. Mm. Heat's I mean, terrible, I would say. The number what one do you killer think? on a train is heat. Uh, heat, no fluid. I mean, leaks will get them, uh, and no fluid will get them. So, uh, other, I mean, that's about it. I mean, uh, if you overload them, you know, you, you get them over what their capabilities are, sure, they're going to go down. Uh, nothing can help them then. So, mainly service them, keep them going. Okay, publishing your videos is a great service and entertainment for automotive nerds. Your honesty and humbleness are a testimony to your work ethic, and it proves that these qualities bring rewards and success. I'm happy for you and your team. Thanks, John. John, we appreciate your letter. Yes. Remember, he's from Birmingham, Alabama. Like I said, we feel really blessed, and we do. Annie does too, so yeah. we appreciate that. We got a couple more real quick. Thanks, Thanks John. Thank you, definitely. No, you're doing good. Keep on going. Okay, so this letter is from P. Messenger from Crandon, I think that's Wyoming. W.I., I'm not for sure. Sorry. It's early. It says, Dear Richard, first of all, I want to compliment you on your great videos on YouTube. I'm not really one to tear into automatic transmissions. They scare me, but I watch the videos just because it is refreshing to see someone who has so much knowledge and is willing to share it. I have a 1984 Corvette with the 3-4, oh, I'm sorry, with the 4 plus 3 manual transmission. Nice when it is working properly, but a real pain as it ages and begins to malfunction. There is a rocker switch on the console which turns the overdrive off and on. Again, when the transmission is working properly, this switch is fully functional. On, kicks it into overdrive off, will turn off the overdrive aspect. Once the transmission decides not to shift into overdrive, for whatever reason, no amount of coaxing will get into the overdrive. I have tried different shifting, backing off and on the throttle, different gears, clutching, braking, etc. About everything you could think of from inside the car. I am convinced that the overdrive function is regulated by engine temp, RPM, perhaps engine vacuum, and who knows what all else. Can this transmission be weird or convert? I'm sorry, not weird. They're all weird. <laughs> um, can this transmission be wired or converted to a manual overdrive lever to override the sensors or whatever controls it now. Can you tell me how to do it or do you need it on your bench? If you need it on your bench, do you need the entire transmission or just the overdrive unit? Shipping will be expensive. It is very expensive, guys, but doable. I'm willing to ship the entire setup to you to get it right. Since my Corvette is put away for the season here in northern Wisconsin, sorry Wisconsin, timing is not critical. I do have full access to it in my heated garage. It says, thank you, Pete Messenger. Pete, that's a lot of thinking right there. I mean, that, that car's a lot pretty old, <laughs> stuff like that. And I've seen a few of them and worked on a few of them, but physically without having the car here, and testing uh, your solenoids and stuff like that to see if one's failing or if it's a vacuum issue or something like that. Uh, it's gonna be pretty hard to diagnose your issue uh, being that the car's so old. Uh, like I said, you're a long ways away. Uh, so that's kind of where we're, we're standing there. I, I, it's really hard to help you, unfortunately. Uh, we're getting a lot of people needing the help a, a long ways away with uh, all kinds of issues. Uh, but that's just one there that I have worked on but without having the car here, 
to help you. That's where pretty much stuff where we're at. Sorry. Yeah, it's not Good easy. answer, though. Good answer. Yeah. yeah. Good answer. I mean, we try. It's really hard to yeah. answer some of these questions. It, it just yeah. is. I mean. I mean. <laughs> you can put them together <laughs> all kinds of wrong ways. Yeah. And then expect me to try to figure out the wrong way you put them together. You know, uh, it's tough. But uh, I do know a lot on trainings on how they work and stuff like that where I can help you. But then there's sometimes you... They're just so bizarre that it, it's almost impossible. So, without a scanner, a computer, some type of uh, instrument at home to run electronic tests and stuff like that, then we're pretty much in trouble. Okay, so this is going to be another one of those, um, you know, can you help me? This is what I've got. Um, it is from Mark Black out of Phoenix, Oregon. And his letter starts, hello, first thank you all for all your work putting out vids for us. Second, and this is something we may or may not be able to answer because it is computer controlled. I have an Allison 1000 five speed behind a 5.9 Cummins rated at 260 horsepower in my 34 foot 2000 class A motorhome with 122K miles. It shifts fine and has never missed a shift or acted up while driving it around. When in drive with WOT, it upshifts around 2600 RPM. I can drive 500 to 600 miles, stop overnight, and have no drifts under it in the morning. The problem is that when I turn on the exhaust brake to help with a long downhill run, the TCU will let will let the engine turn 3,000 before upshifting and will downshift at 2,600. After a minute or so at RPM above 2,800, it will foam the oil and start puking it out of the vent. I use Transcend TES 295 fluid. I pulled the pan and replaced both filters. The pan was clean except for a bit of blackish slime on the magnet. Same for the external spin on mag. I ripped the internal filter apart and there was nothing much in it. No shiny bits of metal or chunks of clutch lining. No nothing that would indicate anywhere problem. I was told on a forum that the dipstick might be wrong and I'm overfilling it. Found on Allison's site that an oil change, it should hold 10.6 quarts of fluid. It has the deep pan, so I'm thinking I'll pull the plug and refill the 10.6 quarts and see what the stick says. I've always followed Allison's procedure for checking it hot and thought on how to verify that the dipstick is marked right. I've been quoted 5,500 to 9,000 to R&R it. None of them can give me a reason as to why it is doing this. All they seem to know how to say it sounds like it's worn out. 122K miles and clean pan filter does not really sound like worn out to me. But what do I know? I'm 74 years old, 100% disabled vet. I cannot afford to spend that kind of money and find out there is nothing wrong with it. And I just wasted a bunch of money because it was just a clogged external cooler or bad hose allowing air to be sucked into it or, or I don't know. Do you have any thought? Hmm. A lot of questions there you're asking. I mean, um, you know, I have a bus too that does a, uh, kind of the same thing. Uh, when you have your engine brake on going down hills, it tries to over rev the motor, uh, stuff like that, where my bus will bring on the cooling fan to try to slow the bus down. And then if the fan can't do it, it'll, it'll downshift the transmission uh, to a lower gear, which does cause the, the engine to rev pretty high. I think mine would do about, like you said, about 3000 RPM in my bus. And, uh, which we have a low brake and a high brake. So I try to work it in between, uh, to get it to not to over rev the motor. So, and I try to work my switches going downhill because it does try to over rev the motor. So, uh, when it comes to the, the foaming of the fluid and stuff like that, we've seen, uh, fluid broke down so bad, wore out so bad, that it physically causes aeration of the fluid itself just from being broke down. Where new fluid will not cause aeration uh, 
of the fluid. So I would say get this fluid as clean as you can in this thing. If you just service it once, drive it a few hundred miles, let's service it again. I don't know what your fluid looks like or anything like that to physically know. Uh, well, he said it was clean in the letter. Right, but you know, I would have to physically look at the fluid because clean fluid and I mean, there's variations of clean looking fluid. So uh, different fluid breaks down different. And uh, these buses don't have big coolers on them. They usually cool through the radiator hose. They have a big torpedo cooler inside the engine radiator hose that cools the fluid for the transmission. Uh, I've looked at my bus too, trying to figure out how to drop the transmission temperature and stuff like that when we go through the mountains to add an extra cooler in it. And it's pretty hard to do. You have to almost have to buy them from uh, 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 Spark chassis or something like that. I call them and talk to them. You know, it's a special cooler, but you can't get them. But uh, really hard to say without the bus being here again to look at your fluid, drive it, kind of feel it out and stuff like that. That's not a lot of miles for that Allison tranny. So I don't think the trannies wore out neither. But like I said, I don't know what your fluid looks like. So, or what your pan looked like. So it's kind of hard, hard to say, you know, that too. So mm -hmm. that's probably about the best I can answer that on that question. Uh, I can't think of anything really else. Uh, get that fluid clean, really clean. I mean, it needs to be bright red. No yellow color, no nothing like that. So I change my uh, transmission fluid on my bus probably after every 30 engine oil change. So that's how regular we keep our fluid clean because it does turn it yellow. So that's where we're at. Uh, we appreciate the letters. Hey, wait, I have it. one more letter. Oh, do you, you have, have one, one more? more? Well, we had another one I thought that was handwritten in that very, very first one that no, was sent to us. It's not no, Dad knows what I'm talking about. I don't have a hand. And it, we appreciate everything everybody does. Definitely. We're fixing um, to get back to work and build yeah. a six speed. Put yeah. a six speed down. Do a few other things. Yeah. Not any. So we appreciate everything. Annie appreciates the love and the support too. And yeah. um, everyone have a very blessed day. Happy holidays. Thanks. Bye. Bye.